the Bible says, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and a horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Join us every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media and Spreaker Radio of the Pearls of Veronica. As her guests share their journey, as they try to accept their loss, they come together for transparency and comfort. Join us right now, right here on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media. Thank you for tuning in. Good evening, and welcome to Pearls with Veronica, a show geared toward grief and loss and the process of living forward on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. My guest tonight is Katie Dale, an author, mental health advocate, and loving mother who has experienced the loss of a child. Losing a baby means the loss of dreams for the baby's future, And sometimes parents may feel they were robbed of time to get to know their child. Welcome, Katie. Hello. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me, Veronica. You're welcome. Thank you for being my guest tonight as we talk about Mm -hmm. grief and loss of a child. But first, I'd like for Katie to tell us who she is and what she does. Um, Well, Thank you for having me. I'm um, currently residing in rural Missouri with my husband, Chris, and his family. Um, I am a caseworker at a behavioral health outpatient uh, nonprofit organization. So I work with those with mental illness during the day for my full-time job, but I also have my own experience with mental illness and have a diagnosis of bipolar one with psychotic features. And I've been um, hospitalized a couple of times in my life and I've wrote a book about that a memoir this year um, called, but deliver me from crazy. And I also blog on bipolarbrave.com and talk about my faith in mental illness. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Tonight we'll be we'll be discussing or having a conversation about losing an infant child. I read that Jackson was in the NICU, and for the listeners out there, NICU N I C U is just the abbreviation for a neonatal intensive care unit. And I too had that experience of having a baby in NICU, and it is not a good feeling at all for a mother who has just had a baby. Mm-hmm. Jackson was only eight days old when he died. How has your faith strengthened you on this journey? Um, My faith has um, really been a gift to me personally, um, knowing that, you know, the time we had with him was just as precious as as possible, um, that God gave us the gift of the eight days with him. Um, and we we had not imagined, the thought never crossed our mind that this would be the situation. I mean, um, I had a seamless pregnancy, healthy up until the day I delivered. Um, it was totally out of nowhere. So the moment he was born, um, having him placed on my chest, blue and squirt, well, not even squirming, but like just blue and slimy and I didn't even barely get a chance to, to hold him before they whisked him away and put him on the warming table. And as soon as that happened, I didn't have a like gut feeling like, oh, my goodness. I was just like at a kind of a calm, steady, like, okay, he's out. We've got him. We just need to pray for a miracle now. So I turned to my husband. He was there at my bedside the whole time, and he said, you know, let's pray. So we, we held hands, and we we prayed for his life, um, for God to breathe life back into him. So after 23 minutes of not breathing, you know, 
being out in the world for 23 minutes without breath, um, they resuscitated him, uh, put him on a ventilator, and after that, he was transported to the NICU nearby and um, basically had his, you know, um, the nurse staff were, were taking care of him. And I saw God so much in, in the midst of all that, that um, my faith was not only just challenged, but encouraged because God works so much in our midst. So. Yes, he does. He does. And you, I know you referenced um, the number eight and I too had an eight, <laughs> um, eight months with my deceased husband and you had eight days with mm-hmm. Jackson. And I believe in calling their names. I had eight months with Reginald, eight months and eight days with Jackson um, the the number eight in the Bible represents a new meaning, um, a man's true born again, you know. And I believe that God is really moving in our lives as we speak, because who would imagine that we would have a platform where we could talk about our laws openly and be transparent? Because everybody, somewhere, somebody is grieving the loss of a loved one or a loss of a job somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that you said that your faith was a gift to you. We have to it have really that is. faith. Mm-hmm. We have to have that faith. And I, and I like that. It was a gift. And how has your husband, mm-hmm. Chris, dealt mm-hmm. with Jackson's death? Um, Chris has dealt with it, um, well, let me tell you about Chris. He's a, he's a strong man. Um, as, um, when I watched him in the NICU by his bedside, I mean, he was there when I was going to the bed or to the, um, they had us in a bedroom staying at the NICU for the parents, like down the hall. But I was in the bedroom when Chris was always at the bedside of the nursery for the baby. But he was just such a strong oak through the whole thing. Like I told him, you're like an oak tree in the storm. Um, he consistently stayed by Jackson's bedside, would, you know, um, like, pet, well, he was, he was there. He was praying for him. He was singing to him. He was talking to him about our family and just spending this quality time with our son who was, you know, for the most part, um, just lying there and like a sleeping baby. Um, you know, he wasn't really awake, but Chris just sacrificed his time and his body. He, he barely ate, but he was there for him like through and through. And I just admire his strength and his passion and his love for our baby. Um, he pours so much love and devotion into the eight days we had there that, um, he was by my side, but he was also, you know, there for Jackson. He that was his dream was to be a dad from when he was a little boy, and so it was just amazing to watch him, you know, have that strength in that time. That's wonderful because of the bonding. Although he um, was he able to touch Jackson or anything? Yeah, we were able to hold him. Um, you know, oh, we yeah. had um, the ventilator on him most of the time, but. Yeah, he held him as much as he could. And he's processed it a lot um, after the fact, you know. With, he, he struggles a lot with um, coming to terms with having us take him off life support. You know, he mm-hmm. felt like mm-hmm. God could do a miracle. And he prayed for that miracle so hard. So when it came time to be like, you know, his body functioning is shutting down, um, we could just, you know, we could continue on the ventilator and watch it continue to um, get worse, or we could take him off the life support and let him, you know, in terms of the natural cause or the natural process of death and dying, it was very hard for him and Chris to, you know, wrap his mind around that and reconcile that with God being a God of miracles who could bring him back to life, which is what he was praying for, you know. So, um, I can um, I can relate to Chris's prayer, praying for your loved one to be healed, and you're looking at it. You know, you're you're grasping it. Um, how can I say it? You're you're 
you're in this state mm -hmm. where you see what's happening. You see it with your eyes, but you're mm -hmm. still praying to God for this miracle. God, I know you can turn mm -hmm. this around because you're the God of, yeah. a, of a second chance. You're the God of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. But he didn't answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. He did not answer my prayer. He didn't answer Chris's prayer. Mm -hmm. But I'm just so glad that he never lost his faith and didn't waver in the process. Right. Right. And, and after math and after math and then after, you know, thoughts of, well, you know, what is it? Does this mean God isn't good that he didn't hear us or that he, no, I mean, he heard us. He's still good. Um, but sometimes the answer is no. And, you know, he has a better reason for that. I mean, if we put on our spiritual sight, you know, and look through it with the eyes of our heart, we know that he's in heaven with Jesus. We know that he's, you know, being taken care of by Jesus in heaven and is whole and healed and um, has it way better than we do right now. So we can also look through it through that lens. That comforts me. Um knowing that he's there and that we'll get to spend time with him um, eventually, you know, get to know him, get to know what he sounds like, get to know what his eye colors are, you know, eye color is and his hair color and his features and his personality. And I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to that because like you said in the beginning, we have dreams for our children and when they don't survive such a tragedy, it's like they're lost the dream they're lost or they're, you know, forsaken, but they're not. God's going to restore everything in, in a new life, in the new earth. And my father-in-law, who pastors, um, brought it to our attention that there is some scriptures that supports um, the, the thought that G, uh, in the new earth, the children will, like, have passed on from this earth, will be able to grow up for, like, a hundred years. Um, and we'll get to watch them and participate in raising them. So um, that's been a comfort to us as well. Wow. That's very great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Chris, describe, I know he's with the Air Force and he travels. <laughs> you're, you're, you're traveling mm -hmm. family. <laughs> yeah. um, how has his supportive nature helped you? Um, like his, his supportive nature has been a rock to me. Um, it's where, where I was eight years ago, speaking of number eight, you know, I was in the psych ward when we were married and having a crisis there. But I mean, through and through, he's been so faithful to me and supportive. Um, we've had really some other trials going on in our marriage in the past recent past. And he just never wavers. Um, he's the most resilient, like steadfast person I know. Um, and he just stands by his word. So he's, he's there for you when he says he's going to be there for you. He's reliable, he's responsible and he loves, you know, he shows, shows me forgiveness. He shows me, um, mercy and um, love. And I'm smiling at those descriptive words. <laughs> um, you know, like you said, he's a rock. You know, he's that rock here, but we know who the ultimate rock is, but he's playing yeah. a, a rock in a human form. <laughs> and, right. and, and Chris, and I know you stated that in dealing with, you know, the parts of your marriage, dealing with um, mental illness, and, you know, that that's love. To love, mm -hmm. that's the true definition of love, loving someone in, in, in this capacity. I'm not well right here, and I love you still, but I'm, I'm going to love you back to health. I'm going to love you anyway. Mm -hmm. My love for you doesn't mm -hmm. waver, not at all. Um, you know, because grief work is very, very intense. Tell mm -hmm. us how has Katie managed to take time out for Katie? Um, well, like part of my nature and my talent and abilities, I, 
I'm an artistic, creative kind of person. So um, I've processed a lot of the grief through um, journaling and um, being able to write out how I'm feeling and blogging and just prayer journaling. Um, so I've taken care of my thoughts and my mental and emotional health through that. I also am big into running. So I'll, although I haven't been running in the past year, um, as much as I usually do, because I'm pretty competitive about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I'm still, still going for walks every once in a while counts. <laughs> Um, you know, just with, um, having the gain, weight gain of like 50 pounds when I was pregnant and, uh, you know, I was running up until like 20 doing the 5k with Jackson in my belly. But Mm -hmm. after that, it was all down to like, (laughs) so I was like, all right, now after the baby's not here anymore, I don't have. I can't breastfeed, so that doesn't help me lose weight. <laughs> but um, I've also changed my diet in the last month. Here I'm on week two of c- cutting out a lot of processed carbs and sugars, and I found that I feel a lot better and a lot more energy and less hungry all the time. So I'm very glad I've made that decision to cut out the processed foods. Um, but I also know that you know every facet of life um, has to stay healthy. And once you get, you know, seeking first the kingdom, keeping God first, everything else falls into place. So. That's wonderful. I've got to get back to running and <laughs> walking. Um, I, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been doing any of that lately. Oh, uh, you run too? Will. Yeah, yeah. I, we did a little running, a little running, not mm-hmm. much, but is my my goal is on my bucket list is to do a five k. <laughs> that's on my bucket oh, list. I have yeah. a, that's on my bucket list. I need to train mm-hmm. for the five k mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and most definitely physically. <laughs> yeah, it is a test of the mind more than almost more than the physical too, the mental part, yeah. but. Oh, yeah. It's not the mental at all. You know, just training and practice and practice gets you somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah. Have have you and Chris managed to make time for one another? And if so, um, what ways? Um, You know, it's been really busy. I will be honest, like me working full time, him working full time. We don't get as much time as I'd like together, but we do get a lot of time. Like, I can't say we don't have time together. (laughs) Um, We've been going to counseling, (laughs) too. Family therapy to process um, Jackson's law, our, you know, grieving and and our communication in our marriage. Um, We've been working on that a lot because no marriage is perfect. And by, by, like... You know, by no, to no degree is it, have we like <laughs> mastered the communication part, but <laughs> it's like we're we're working on that with you know intentional talking about it in counseling and then working on it at home. But um, yeah, we do make time for each other. It's just especially lately, like I've had to talk to him, and be like, hey, the day of, say, turn to him and say, can we talk tonight? Because I'm a very like. My love language is quality time. His isn't. And I'm just like, and we're both introverts. So I'm like, we've got to talk. I've got to like express myself and I've got to like have an inter- interaction with you and engage with you. So I'll turn to him during the day and I'll be like, hey, can we spend an hour tonight just talking? He's like, yeah, sure. And he's a great listener. Like he'll just listen. Uh, and to not fix something like men typically want to fix something, but he's like one of those, I can just listen and listen. Okay. You know? Um, but if, if I need a fix or some kind of solution, he's good at that too. (laughs) And that's a great thing. The, um, the communication part is very, very good. Um, and it's necessary because, you know, he's Mm -hmm. processing, you know, still the loss of Jackson and you're still processing the loss of Jackson Mm -hmm. and that communication, the openness and the being transparent in your feelings. It's needed. It is very needed. And I'm so glad that he's very supportive. <laughs> and you all are supportive and manage that, manage that time 
um, to get that time in to actually talk to one another. And he sits and he just listens to what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Like you say, men, sometimes men want to fix it. I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to listen right now. Mm-hmm. I just need your ears. I need your big ears. Um, yeah. but a lot of times when I'm writing in Pearl with Veronica, I'll talk about Reginald, how I miss his big ears. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when I say his big mm-hmm. ears, uh, and, and I'm referencing how he would just let me just talk, talk, and talk, and talk. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. then, <laughs> he was just like he would nod every night even every every once again he would nod like I hear you. I said, Do you hear me, honey? Are you listening, honey? He said, I'm listening yeah. to everything you're saying. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I'm like, Okay, you're listening. I know you're listening, but can you validate me a little bit here? <laughs> like <laughs> you that verbal feedback, like uh huh, or like, Okay, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, nod your head or something. Can you will you nod yeah. your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what did you just say? I'm like, can you not? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, on the mental side of this, we've discussed it briefly. How have you dealt with Jackson's death emotionally? Um, I went through a little bit of some anger in the NICU. A lot of my emotions happened. The rocky ones were in the NICU for those eight days. Like I'm over here, like, ow, my body hurts. You know, I just gave birth for like 25 hours <laughs> within labor. <laughs> and then I lived with this war and was like, ow, I had an episiotomy. So that really sucked. But um, oh, yeah. that <laughs> combined with like, the, just the knowing, okay, my son is in critical condition. Um, right. He's probably not going to last, but we're hoping he does come through and pull through. That very, like, well, that faith limbo of, like, well, we hope he's going to improve. And then seeing after the days pass by, well, he's not. But I did have this, you know, anger that came up at one point with my emotions. And I'm very rarely an angry person. Or I should say I very rarely express it. A lot of the times I, like, stuff it or I just, like, let things slide, which really isn't that healthy, you know. But um, I don't let things get out of, like, you know, I don't I don't let things um, kind of get more emotional than I like them to be, I guess. And um, when I get angry, it's for a good reason, I, I think. But it, I don't know. It just... I got angry mm-hmm. because, and it wasn't for a good reason, actually, <laughs> but I got angry because I was mad just emotionally, and I was probably hormonal at the time, but I really was mad at, like, at people in my life, personally, that were, like, encouraging me to get pregnant because I'm like, here I am, 32 years old, we waited 10 years, married for 10 years, we waited that long to decide to, to try for kids, and, like, and I'm thinking, like, I feel like the pressure's on. I'm getting older. It's kind of building up. I see people asking <laughs> me in church, you know, hey, when are you guys going to have a baby and this and that? And I'm like, okay, well, we'll see. You know, maybe eventually, whatever. And I got mad at these people in my life for, <laughs> you know, wanting what was best, I think. Because goodness knows, turning around in hindsight, I wish I would have had a baby sooner, sort of. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's a fulfilling, meaningful thing um, to be a mom. But, you know, I was mad at them temporarily. <laughs> for like, you should have a baby. <laughs> well, here I am, like, in the NICU. What are you thinking? Like, ah, this is such a risk. But, you know, what? anything is a risk. And nothing is worth, you know, getting without a risk, you know. And I think having him... um emotionally, I did not attach to him with a reciprocal, like, he he didn't open his eyes, he didn't cry, he didn't have that interaction with me. So emotionally, I was kind of at a, there was an absence there. So I didn't have that heart-wrenching devastation of emotions when he did pass. I was just more like, during the whole time there, I was getting fed up with this because I felt like a merry-go-round. I was just on this cycle of like, well, he's going to last another four hours or another day or how long is it going to last for on, on life support? 
And it just got to be such a headache in a way, not that he was a headache, but this process of how we were walked through it was such a right. burden. It was just so exhausting emotionally and I was ready to be done. So I called my brother in the middle of the night, the, the day we, we took him off life support, they said, you know, he would be off life support and last a few hours. Well, he lasted 18 hours, you know, just trying to breathe on his own, which is sad. Like, but also like he was really strong. So I called up my brother in the middle of the night. And I'm like, I just need to get off of this merry-go-round and I don't know what to do. And I'm lying there with him with the baby in my arms and, my, and Chris and me holding the baby. And it was just exhausting. Um, I really prayed for God to like, not take him, but like to relieve this burden because you know, you don't want to be there. But like my husband said, nobody wants to die alone. Like, and it it took him to say that for me to realize just for it to kind of click with me and be like, no, of course not. Like nobody wants to die alone. You don't want to leave a baby. But at at one point I was like, I can't stand this. I'm going nuts. Like we're in the room together with the baby as he's dying. It's like, how do you wrap your mind around this? Let alone like know when he's going to breathe his last breath. And like, how do you handle that? So, um, I went through all those emotions and it's just like there, there's something to be said for recognizing and being honest with your emotions. I'm a big proponent of that, um, with my mental illness and my mental health background, but having grief for me, I I was looking it up the other night and grief is a process that isn't really the same for anybody. Like each individual person processes it differently Mm -hmm. Um, I guess there's stages of grief, but nobody goes through all of them the same way. And not everybody goes through all the stages. And I feel like I went through like a turbocharged, like mini crash course in grief when I was in the NICU. So it was a really intense time when I did that. Now, since I've been processing it with my therapist and I was processing it daily with her um, in the NICU, Um, But since then, you know, I've walked through it and I feel like I've come out um, pretty well, you know, reality with with reality in mind. You know, a lot of people would be saying, oh, you're in shock or you're in denial. You're not really processing it. And it's like, no, like I, I get what happened. And he, you know, you know, it was. It's my baby people. (laughs) It's my baby. It's my baby. He's in God's hand. He's gone. He's in God's yeah. hand, but he's still my baby. Yeah. And people don't understand um, how other people grieve. You, you know, if you're not talking about it, you're cold. Well, I was told I was cold hearted at Reginald's funeral. You know, I wasn't cold. I was just processing mm-hmm. the fact that, mm-hmm. you know, here it is. I was married to this man for 22 years and I'm looking to the right. My girls are crying. You know, uncontrollably, I'm looking to the to my left. My son is silently crying, and all and, and these emotions are going. You know, these thoughts are going through your head. How am I going? God, I'm here. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to handle this? Oh, you know, you can move on. No, 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 no. I'm going to live forward. And you know, I like how you say. You know, we. You, you, um, I never was angry. I never got angry, but I questioned. You know, God, you allow him to die. There has to be a reason in this. What's the purpose? Show me my purpose. What am I supposed to do while mm-hmm. I'm here? Mm-hmm. You left me here for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I know you, um, you've you dealt with, you know, you've dealt with your truth and acknowledging, you know, your feelings and accepting, them, you know, mm-hmm. the need to mourn and express, mm-hmm. um, you know, your grief. And I'm just glad that you set aside time to go and meet with your therapist, even in the NICU while, you know, Jackson was in the NICU. And that's mm-hmm. very, I, I applaud you for that. I applaud you for that. Um, she was on my stressful. speed dial. <laughs> she was like, call me <laughs> anytime. I'm like, yep, because it's COVID and everybody's in lockdown. So right. you know, this is March this year and it's like, uh, I better have my therapist on speed dial because I'm not going exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Was good. <laughs> I talked to my aunt and my co- and my cousins and my my um my mom and my family and it just helps to have that support network. I mean that's yeah. huge in any crisis like that. So it's imperative and it 
and it lets you know and it shows you as well who's there to support you when you're in crisis, when you're in that time of need, when you have a loss, um, Mm -hmm. being able to allow you to talk about um, Jackson, being able to allow me to talk about Reginald, laugh at little things, you know, like Mm -hmm. about Reginald. And and we and as we both know, you know, Jackson and Reginald are healed. <laughs> they are healed. That's right. Um, we have some other kind of uh, news too. Is that in the wake of all this, um, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> okay. Right. I we're going to wait for that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to wait for that one. I'm excited, though. I'm really yes. excited. Well, we're going to wait for that news. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 You know, and I applaud you for accepting um, the need to mourn and express your grief. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, you know, by writing, running, um, Changing your eating habits, changing your diet, <laughs> you know, moving your body, solving problems, yeah. and accomplishing, you know, what would be called meaningless, but they're meaningful tasks to us at our pace. Mm-hmm. Don't don't judge us because it's our pace and mm-hmm. it's our journey. Yeah. Right, right, right. And and I feel like I'm 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 going through the grief process. If it's a process, I guess I I feel like I went through it in like a a lot faster pace. Um, mm-hmm. And some days are like, you know, I'll think, I'll look at the picture of it and it's like, oh, my baby, I miss her. And, you know, it's like, I don't get to hold the baby and he was supposed to be here. He's five months old and he would have been sitting up and he would have been, you know, and all that. And it's just something you got to um, process as it comes to, as right. the feelings come um, because things will trigger that, and you can't mm-hmm. help that. Um, and yeah, which those is the triggers will come. That, yeah, they do. The but the beautiful thing about having the Lord is that we can process it with Him, with the Lord, oh, yeah. and prayer, and and you know, just walk through it with Him too. Because He understands because when the triggers come, people. like you said, you know, walking with the Lord and praying. I think I talk to him so much, I need to listen to him sometimes. <laughs> and I say, God, if I'm talking too much, just tell me. Just show me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then yeah, I'm talking yeah. to you, talking your ears off. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good. He loves it when you talk to him. He does. Yeah, we, were talking, we were talking about that earlier. It's like I'm having trouble, like, talking enough to him where I feel like I'm actually having those conversations these <laughs> days. Whereas I'm like more listening for him, I guess, but mm-hmm. I'm then gonna slow down and just, you know, remember to bow my head and just, or just talk to him in my heart, you know. Yes, I find that you know I'm setting aside um, a certain time. I'm an early riser anyway, but I find that when I get up, I'm up and I'm and I'm just sitting here. I said, I'm here. Here I am, God. I miss mm-hmm. you. I said, because yeah. you know that by the time I get through with this hour, I'm, you know, I set aside this hour for you. My day is going to be starting at seven o'clock, signing a little person on <laughs> to Zoom. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yes, this mm-hmm. virtual learning. Um, yeah. and, and you mentioned that your father a lot. Um, his name is Robin. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah. Are you a member of his church or – because my next question is, how has your church family been supportive of you and Chris? Um, it's pretty cool. They they really um, showed their love and, and care for us. Um, one of the first days we were back home after the NICU, you know, it felt like the world was just backwards looking through like a mirror, but – um, I remember one of the families from church brought us a whole meal and, like, sat and visited with us. And, you know, of course, it's COVID time, so I was trying to be just keep their distance, which was hard because they don't want to, like, crowd us and they don't want to come in with COVID stuff going on. So that was hard for them. But they did express their condolences and they sent us, you know, um, tokens of, you know, that. Um, but also 
they allowed us to have um, a funeral celebration of life service for him in June and allowed us to use the facility, the church building for that. And we're there for us for that, to help celebrate his life, you know, and um, they came out, we had like a balloon release where we gave everybody a, a lot of those red balloons because um, my husband's name is Christopher Robin and we had a whole Winnie the Pooh theme baby shower, you know, Winnie the Pooh okay. theme agenda balloon. And so like Winnie the Pooh is known for his little red balloons and he floats up the, to the tree to get the honey out of and we thought that would be appropriate. So we, we all did a balloon release at the end of the ceremony. Um, but they were there for us as the hands and feet of Jesus to, you know, comfort us in that time. Um, they, they gave us, um, you know, the time to be with our family and they respected that, you know, with our immediate family. They also gave us, um, encouraging words and cards, um, and on Facebook too, you know, messages. Um, one particular family sent us a card and remember I was telling you about how my, I told my husband he was such a strong oak tree. In the storm, right. in the midview. Well, one of those families from church gave us a card with like the oak tree. It said on the front with a picture of an oak tree in the storm, <laughs> and they had like a whole like poem about an oak tree in the storm. You know how wow. it stands the storm. I was like, wow, that's such a God thing. We ended up also getting um, a lot of support from Chris's work at the base in the military, and they one of his units gave us a an actual oak seedling, like a little um, wow. seed in the plant. So it turned out to be a God thing with the theme of the oak. Um, but I just think, you know, we had a lot of comforters around us, a lot of people praying for us through the time, and a lot of people just sending their love and their prayers, which was the best thing because, you know, you can feel the prayers. You're not, you're not able to see everybody, and especially at this time, you're not able to in, embrace people physically and like see each other face to face, but having the prayer sent was an encouragement because you know, they're praying for you. Right. And I can relate to that. I can truly relate to that. The community out in Effingham and a lot of the community out in, in Chatham County and we live, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. And it just, uh, from the East to the West, <laughs> North and the South, that's the point wow. there. Um, from my home church to the church that I'm currently a member of, mm-hmm. you know, the support was there. I mean, it, it was there. And I, and I just honor God and I look back on it and I said, God, I thank you. <laughs> I said, because where would I be? Mm-hmm. You know, had you not sent these people to um, cook a meal, schedule meal cooking, come and clean. <laughs> yeah. You know, while mm-hmm. I run, while I ran errands to prepare for a funeral, one team mom came, cheer mom came, and she cleaned, cleaned the house for me. <laughs> you know, and you're just grateful because you know it's God sent. You know it's God sent. And um, that reminds me, I'm looking at it right now, the post I, I made about it, but, um, you know, the benefit to having a church family, but also, like, just a network of friends and family is that, like, people that I hadn't talked to in years – like suddenly, you know, reached out and were like, hey, you know, um, I'm really sorry. You know, they would just, they reach out and that meant a lot to me. I don't know if, you know, I guess it just, it just made, made it like a, a taste of heaven where it was just like, you know, you see those friends and family and then time goes by and your lives, you know, either people, you know, move on or move away or whatever, but to have older friends and family kind of reach out was kind of heartwarming too. Uh, yeah, um, and it's so and it's so crazy because I have a friend like we're fifty three, and because of life and um, you know raising children, we reconnected during the time of my husband's illness and his death, and. It has been nonstop. It's like we picked up where we left off. At. <laughs> yeah, so I can yeah. relate mm-hmm. to that. It's like everything tonight is so relatable. I'm just yeah. blessed, <laughs> and I'm you know, leaning. We, from, leaning. we do. Mhm. Yeah, um, and that's what we go through the trials for—is to comfort each other. You know. 
So we yeah, that, can that come is exactly right. Right. Mm-hmm. Have you pondered honoring Jackson in any way? Yeah. A memory um, book. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. We we did a photo book, which was pretty neat. The NICU had a photographer for like now I lay me down to sleep, it's called. And they had okay. photos professionally taken of him after he passed, mm-hmm. which was amazing. Like his his um skin coloring and everything and tone was gray and ashen um when he passed, of course. So when they took the pictures it was beautiful how they, you know, rendered the real skin tone and everything. But um yeah, they gave us a complimentary like photo book and then we got some for our parents and they loved them. Um just the whole journey of going through the NICU and we put out like a little blurb on each page. Chris and I got together and um created kind of like a storybook, like what happened, how we got from right. the delivery room to, you know, end of life and everything. And it was just like a, a great memento to keep that we'll, we'll keep forever. Um, and then we also had a um, fund foundation kind of put in his name. Uh, it's called a donor advised fund, but it's, it's a part of a foundation, like a nonprofit foundation that um, it's called super jacks is the name of ours. Okay. And okay. Yeah, for NICU, for that NICU particularly, that NICU that from that hospital at Overland Park in um, Kansas, we did a, a fund for them. So we um, donated some monies to that for them to like, for any kind of like um, families like that we're going through what we're going through, we were going through for, um, you know, gas cards for the families to get to and from the hospital um, anything from that to like tissue boxes that had the soft tissues because <laughs> the hospital provides really hard, scratchy tissues. Yes. Um, Tell me about it. Industrial supplies. Oh, yeah. But uh, we put a, a fund Ooh. together for him. And then we, I was thinking about doing a 5K maybe for him, like maybe after a year. But we are going to be moving around the same time next year mm-hmm. to his next duty station. So yes. I don't think the Fed will be reasonable, but I mean, it's some thought, you know, maybe down the road or something. So, yeah, we yes, would definitely I love, love that. that. <laughs> so I think um, I that it. and just, you know, having his, my cousin sent a bereavement bear to us which is the same weight that he was born at eight pounds, five ounces. Wow. So it's like a little teddy bear that's filled with, I don't know, maybe beads or something, but they have the same weight as the baby for a little baby. That's infant that's passed. So that was pretty neat. Um, but yeah, that's, I feel like I'm forgetting something. My husband's going to get a tattoo of his foot or his handprint on his arm. So okay. Then he forgets. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Um, I remember him because um, I'm reminded of Jackson because after he was born, like the first time I ever noticed this freckle right below my belly button. Well, I mm-hmm. kid you not, like I never knew there was a freckle there until I looked right after he was born, and there was a freckle there, and I never noticed before, or it just showed up. So that's my Jack's mark. Wow. <laughs> Like hey, wow! I'm gonna get a tattoo now. I can just look at the little freckle on my belly button. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! I thought that was kind well, of special. I mean, it's personal. It but is. Hey. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! So so much parallels here. Um, that is so that is so funny. You have that that speck there. <laughs> Because Olivia has a mole in a certain place where I have one at too. That's oh, difficult. <laughs> that's funny. It is so funny. I'm like, oh my god, Olivia and I have a exact a mole in the that's exact cool. same spot. <laughs> and I dare not say over the way where that's located. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But if you catch us in a bikini, you might see it <laughs> <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> oh my goodness! Mm. 
so, yeah. um, you know, know that um, even as you grieve, I grieve, um, we are healing. We take mm-hmm. it one day at a time, and we trust the process. And we have mm-hmm. to remember, you know, that our grief is normal and that we are not alone. Right. But before we close out tonight, Katie, is there something you would like to tell us, tell me <laughs> and the listening audience? Because I'm excited. <laughs> well, we're we're very happy because um, we didn't know it, but at at the Celebration of Life service for Jackson, which was June, we were about a week pregnant. So we are expecting Yay! a baby Woo! within yep, um, February 25th, 2021. Um, or sooner if they he or she decides to make their entrance <laughs> sooner. Um, yeah, so we're really thrilled, and we're not gonna find out the gender until they're born. He or she is born. I keep saying there to be like generic. <laughs> People are like you're having twins. I'm like no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow! I got to tell you this I have story just where I go. Um, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I was. We found out we were pregnant, and we were telling our close family members. And I, I sent, I, I played a joke on my brother, and I really, it was a really bad joke, but it was a really funny joke. I sent him a, a picture of the ultrasound, and it, it almost like looked like there was two in the ultrasound, two little uh, fetuses. Well, I sent it to him, and I said, "Hey, surprise! We're expecting twins," and he flipped <laughs> out. So I, I didn't answer, and I and I sent it as a text, and he flipped out. So for, like, three hours, he didn't call me for three hours, thinking we were all celebrating with Chris's family. He didn't want to interrupt, but he was like, oh, my gosh, this is like Job, and he starts quoting Job because everything got, <laughs> you know, increased double. And he, he when he found out, he called me. I don't know. It's just a joke, bro. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> But yeah, so oh. you know, <laughs> I just think it's he's my brother. He's such a he can handle it, you know. <laughs> yes, he can, and he will. <laughs> I am so excited for you and Chris. I'm excited, um, and we know that God does all things for His purpose. For His purpose. Um. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited that we've had this opportunity to converse on grief and loss and to and talk about Jackson because <laughs> he he was born. He you know, he was a human form. Jackson. Yeah. Say his name. His name is Jackson. Jackson. Jackson Dale. Sugar Jack. Sugar Jack. <laughs> and I thank you so much for sharing your exciting news with us. Um, you and Chris is exciting news. Expecting February twenty first. I'm gonna cross my fingers for February twentieth and I'll tell you why. That was my wedding anniversary. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so yes. I'm like, okay, February twentieth will be a good day. <laughs> Possible. Well, hey. I'll let you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Listeners, you can find Katie at Katie at bipolarbrave dot com or bipolarbrave.com forward slash publicity for links to past interviews and feature stories. This has been Veronica Brown, your host of Pearls with Veronica on Positive Power, Power 21 Christian Media. Once again, thank you, Katie, for being my guest on tonight on your journey with Jackson. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. You're welcome. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I'll keep in touch. Absolutely. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you for joining us, Pearls with Veronica. Thank you for tuning us on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and share the file. I'm Jerry Rose Live Worldwide, and welcome to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Thank you very much.